All right, hello everyone, and uh, good morning, everybody. This is early morning uh, broadcast. Uh, please invite your friends, share the link with everybody you know. It's going to be a short video, just for the sake of education. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, there is uh, one of our brothers. He have a debate lately with the Muslim, and when he mentioned something, he told him, "Oh, this is from uh, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ishaq." And Ibn Ishaq is not, uh, you know, is not trustworthy in Islam. Is he have many problems, you know? So today our topic is about problems, and the problems is in the Muslim books. Uh, I did just search on the internet. I just type, you know, authentic uh, books, etc., and I found uh, this article. Uh, which is obviously written by an idiot and I will tell you why the name of the article is problem with uh, the problem with Ibn Ishaq Sirat Rasulullah the Arabic life of the Messenger of Allah and other early source of Islam prophet etc you know this is my challenge first for all the Muslims can you find me one books you Muslims don't have a problem with it? Okay, which is the book you Muslims accept as a book with no problems? Any Muslim can tell me? What is the book you Muslims accept with no problem? Even the Quran have a problems. So this is the situation. Any book will look will make Muhammad look like an idiot, look like stupid, look like a criminal, look like dumb. The Muslims right away, not because the book have a problem, but because they have a problem. And the problem the Muslims are suffering from, they cannot handle the truth. Why this guy, he have a problem? Why? All the Muslim scholars approve him. And he is very authentic and he is one of the highest authority of Islam and today I'm going to get you busted this is official Islamic website for scholars Islam QA dot info hmm? do you see the title Muslims do you see the title all right this is not a Christian website. Hello, Abdul. Wake up. Take some drugs. This is not a Christian website. Yes, it's in Arabic, but I have the link underneath. You can translate using Google if you wish. Even if, if you are a Muslim who pray to Allah in Arabic, but you do not know Arabic. What a dumb nation. And this is the fatwa number. 148009. Alright? This is what? The fatwa number. Fatwa, for those who do not know what fatwa, is the opinion of the scholars, like let's say, based in the religion. So it is a holy, or let's say, an uh, like authority uh, answer. This is what fatwa mean. So the question was, what is your opinion about Ibn, Ibn Ishaq, the, uh, the son of Isaac, uh, or Ishaq, 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 as is called him in English? I heard that he is not too much accurate and he is was easy you know he's like putting him down in his quotation for the hadith which made the, the scholars don't agree with him or don't accept him uh, don't accept any uh, uh, like a report from or narration coming from him is that correct so this is the question all right uh, the answer is they start telling you who is Ibn is is Haq. He is 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 the son the son of the son of the son. Okay, uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, and then they give you they give you some of his students or let's say the scholars who they are uh, you know known to 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 take him. Uh, and then his life uh, summary. Uh, we want to go to the business. Okay. All right. Now they are coming to what the scholars they say about Ibn Ishaq. 
He said that uh, the scholar Shu'bah ibn al-Hajjaj, you know, uh, and he is Amir al-Mu'mina fil hadith. He is the highest scholar of the hadith. Hmm? Uh, so, sorry, uh, he is. He, he said about Ibn Ishaq that he is the the uh, Amir al muminin like he is what they call it, like the Caliphate of the Hadith. He is the the highest authority of the Hadith. Uh, uh, Abu Muawiyah al Darir he said, the son uh, Ibn Ishaq he was one of the most uh, 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 like hard keeper between all people, which means he you know he memorized. All right. Uh, and he says, and he was, if there is a man, uh, he have five hadith uh, or more, he give it to Ibn Ishaq. And then he uh, he says to him, uh, uh, please keep it for me, you know, like recite it or let us say memorize it. So if I, if I lose it, if I forget it, you can remind me. So uh, Ibn Ishaq was like a, 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 a memory drive, you know, for the Muslims. Uh, so he is quoting all those scholars that what they are saying that this guy is an amazing guy hmm? now number seven is a part of the answer the answer about uh, the the words about uh, like putting him down or let us say uh, uh, saying that he is not qualified and then he divided to those those sections and he is uh, talking that he is accused that he is uh, believing in the destiny to the point he was beaten and he was whipped because of that and this is a true you know uh, he was accused that he is a Shia but the guy he is not Shia you know anyway uh, and then uh, this is scholar, he said, and this is a Muslim Sunni website, by the way. This is a Sunni scholar talking. Uh, and even those, if those happen to be, they will not affect his hadith. Because the scholars still take from those who believe in the destiny, in the way like he is, he believe in it, and the Shia, if it's proven to be, they are honest. Then he said, the number three, accusing him that he is like adding things, fabricating hadith, let us say. It's mentioned by Ibn Hajar uh, uh, in the in the third in the fourth rank uh, from those who they are like uh, uh, you know fabricate. Uh, page number fifty one. Uh, he said he is well known that he fabricate or he you know like add the uh, uh, let us say weak hadith or unknown source hadith etc. Uh, and then the scholar he says, and this is not any like this is not a reason to put him down at all. Fal mudallis is explained now to us the mudallis is it the one who fabricate is it what? Uh, فالمدلس المكثر من التدليس يقبل يقبل حديثه إذا صرح بالسماء okay now they are saying even if the one he is a مدلس as they call him he is the one who uh, let us say he give he gives a hadith don't have a proof of source still his hadith is accepted uh, you know simply because there is no proof that this is not uh, right as simple as that you know who is the one who is the one who says that he is uh, uh, this hadith is correct or not? You know, you are there, you witnessing. No, so he is just reporting what he heard. Uh, number four, accusing him of lying, and he said, and this is absolutely a false accusation, never been proved on him. So let us make it simple here, that there's nobody, you know, like he's saying, if he report a hadith which is might be weak. But the weak still accept in Islam, as you know. Still, there's nobody can say that Ibn Ishaq was a liar. And then he says, he 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 called the names of those who called him to be a liar. All right. And he said, and regarding the accusation by Hisham ibn Arwa that he is a liar, 
uh, and this is was copy from uh, uh, Yahya al qattan that because uh, uh, he once he said that Ibn Ishaq said from my wife Fatima bin Tulmunzir wa inna inna wallah wallahi in in ra'aha qat I don't know what that is that mean exactly and he said here uh and this is not enough really to accuse some someone he is a big huge scholar to be a liar because he didn't say anything wrong you know so that, let's let's make it simple the guy he did not like a statement he said so he called him to be a liar that's all so he said this is not a reason to call him a liar for any reason so anyway and he's saying it may be and maybe he heard her from behind the uh, the wall i don't know like what what the story here behind this actually uh what exactly i need to read the whole quotation to to, to remember what this is about so anyway here this is color uh, uh, like band after band he is showing you that this man is not a liar he said and the uh, malik he said that he is a he is a he's a liar yeah uh, and all the scholars refuse what Malik said about him. All the scholars refuse. All the scholars refuse. All right. We continue. Uh, and Yaqub ibn Shayba, سألت علي يعني المديني. What do you think about Ibn Ishaq? He said he was Sahih. Then he said yes, he is. His hadith for me is Sahih. And then he said to him, What about what Malik he said about him? You know, the, the scholar Malik. He said, Malik, he never sat with him, he never met him. And anything he, you know, he caught uh, or he mentioned uh, about Ibn Ishaq is from the, from the Medina, which means yeah, this guy, he never met him, he never know him. What, where is going with this from? You know? So look like Malik is the liar, not this guy, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, here Ali he said the Hisham is not the, not the, a proof that he is a liar. Blah 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 blah. So all of this, uh, the Imam was Zahabi, the, the the golden Imam, based Allah Allah upon him said, uh, blah, 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 which means Ibn Ishaq is a wonderful man, etc. Okay, and then he says, uh, he is answering. Anyway, the, the point is the whole, if I don't read it all, he said all of this about Ibn Malik, sorry, Ibn Ishaq, will not make him not a trustworthy because all the scholars agree. If there's a few scholars don't agree with him, most of them they agree mostly like because they are jealous. Uh, but the, the scholars of Islam, the majority, few of them only, they took few quotations of him. Only few have nothing to do with the rest of the hadith. Like they are not even denying something serious. Like the guy, he heard the women or he did not. I mean, this is the, the most thing they, they try to make it. All his uh, stories are false just because there is a scholar. He did not like one sentence of Ibn Ishaq. So uh, to make it simple, Ibn Ishaq, he wrote a book, it's called Al Maghazi. And Al Maghazi, you know, described the life of Muhammad and his crimes specifically. And those crimes are really disgusting. So, what the Muslim they will do in order to make him look like he is not trustworthy and Muhammad did not do that, and our Prophet is not a scumbag, he is not a thief, he is not a rapist, he is not a child molester, he is not a homosexual, he is not, etc. So, what we do, we now we say we don't accept Ibn Ishaq to the point even some of the Muslims they start saying that Ibn Ishaq is a Christian you see before they used to say anything written about Muhammad bad they say is written by the Jews now they could not find anything about this guy to make him a Jew so they made him a Christian all right now if we search the same story about Al-Bukhari you will find Al Bukhari, which is supposedly the second book after the Quran, according to many Muslims, have a problems. But what the problem with Al Bukhari? I thought this is authentic. This is not only authentic. This is the most authentic book. The problem with Al Bukhari there's a lot of stupid things exposing Muhammad, and this is not accepted. 
So in order to protect Muhammad from the stupidity he used to do, we accuse the one who collect the stories about Muhammad that he is the problem. So now what we have, we have uh, Ibn Ishaq is a liar, according to those Abduls. Okay, let us dump Ibn Ishaq. So where do you get your stories about Muhammad? Muslims, where do you get your stories? Where Al-Bukhari, he got his stories from? Where Sahih Muslim, he got his stories? Those hadith you put in the Bukhari. Okay, now we will dump Ibn Ishaq. Okay, let us go to Al Bukhari. Is Abu Al Bukhari trustworthy? Look at this. Criticism of Imam Al Bukhari. Like, what the heck? <laughs> what about Sahih Muslim? Criticism of a Sahih Muslim. Like, what the heck? So, any book, to make it simple, any book make Muhammad exposed and show the real face of this filthy man the Muslim they will say this book have a problem hmm? it doesn't matter what book if your book like as an example if a Christian prince he wrote a book about the miracles of the Quran the scientific miracles of the Quran but he did not show you that Muhammad is a false prophet and there is no miracle in the Quran he made a, a book in opposite direction to prove to you that Islam and Quran have scientific miracles then now Muslim will find a problem with my book trust me not even one Muslim there's no problem absolutely this book is perfect but wonderful the second you start showing things how stupid Islam is this it is the same second they start saying this is a this is a false fabrication uh, this is a false hadith hadith uh, this hadith is uh, missing vitamin D and A and B and C and F and G This is your problem Muslims you cannot handle the truth it is not the books have a problem it is you 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 know like you you, you will see articles written by Muslims against what is written in Sahih Bukhari but Sahih Bukhari is the most authentic book for the Abdul so what is left because either Al Bukhari is a trustworthy and we take whatever he have there or we dump whatever he have there because if he is a liar fabricating hadith adding stupid ones then he is not trustworthy and that's it as an example the Muslim they quote for us the sermon of the Prophet the last sermon hmm? Muslims where do you get this last sermon from or from huh Muslims, who, who want to tell me where you got the, the last sermon from? <laughs> from a book you don't accept. <laughs> oh boy. You know, you see how stupid they are? But because they lost the sermon, to, to, to especially when they speak to, to black people to fool them, oh, suddenly this sermon is, uh, is a brother, uh, is uh, authentic. It's very authentic, authentic. Really? Are you sure? <laughs> Uh, hypocrite shish kebab nation uh, when when the statement is good for them it's good for them which means when the statement make Muhammad look nice uh, then uh, fit with the two, 2017 so we we love it and we say this is a good uh, uh, you know a good uh, you know but if we go in details and we see that the last sermon of Muhammad for the Sunni is not the, is not the same as the last sermon for the Shia so why they are different then if they are from the same authentic sources and is the last sermon of Muhammad was from an authentic sources do we have any Muslim here listening Any Abdul? Nobody. So you know, uh, the story is very simple. When there is something 
will not condemn Muhammad and will not make him look like an idiot, a criminal, fool, stupid, homosexual, thief, etc. Anything like that, there's no Muslim objection. The objection only will happen when something will make Muhammad look as he is. As an example, just to show you something like uh, as an just an example, you know, not uh, as an example here. Uh, let me open Sahih al Bukhari. I'll open the Sahih website. All right. Um, we say which one we will show you. An example, an example. Not necessarily. I'm just like thinking about one. Okay. Look at this hadith. Do you find anything there? No. Anything it says that's not this is not good? No. Okay. The second you show this hadith to a Muslim, that the wife of the Prophet put in a dish between her legs down her vagina, and her vagina is a dripping. The same second he will say to you, This is weak. What the heck? This is Sahih al Bukhari, and it says there, there's no, you see, there's, do you see any sign there? The Sahih al Bukhari, my friend, is supposedly made to be the book of authentic. That's what it's like. The word Sahih in Arabic means authentic. So, what do you mean it's weak? Because they are feeling ashamed. I mean, why this is story even written there? So, this story was accepted for the last 1400 years. But now the Muslims they find it very insulting and very stupid and very dumb, and you know it's a shameful. Imagine, imagine I am married and my wife she take the microphone right now and she say, "Hey guys, yesterday Christian Prince he was praying and one of his wives, you know, not that seven one, not the eight one, that the twelve one, uh, she was a dripping." So the Prophet uh, Christian Prince uh, Muhammad Christian Prince, peace upon him. Uh, he, uh, uh, his wife, she put a dish between his legs. What the heck? So anything is embarrassing, right away they downgrade this story and say we don't accept it. But who are you to accept or not? Either you accept the book or you don't accept the book. Do you accept the book? This book is accepted for the last 14 centuries. Actually, sorry, since it's written, you know, because it's not written since the time of Muhammad. So they are choosy, uh, those losy Muslims. Or what about, as long we mentioned the dish here, what about Muhammad? He received a dish of wisdom and dish of faith. You know, no, no Muslim, no Muslims say this is not right. They don't say this is weak. <laughs> Why? Because they don't find something embarrassing there. It's a miracle. The prophet, two angels, they came and they give him a dish of wisdom. I mean, have you ever heard of a dish of wisdom, you idiot? Have you ever heard of somebody? He is a prophet of God. He received a dish of wisdom and a dish of faith. Huh? Like what the hell? What's wrong with you, Muslims? After a while. You will see the Muslim, they will start denying this because they will start thinking about it like this of wisdom. This is stupid. So we will start saying it's weak soon, soon. Huh? After a Christian prince, he criticized us like this now. Uh, so we have to say it is weak. Otherwise, the prophet, he will look like, obviously, he is a liar. Nobody in the world will believe that there's angels who deliver faith in dishes. Angels of God. Huh? Angels of God. They don't bring wisdom and they don't open a stomach of a guy to make him qualify to be a prophet. Can you can any Muslim tell me why they open his stomach? What for? He is a prophet of God, or this guy will digest food. What is the purpose of this surgery? And as you see here, it says Sahih. Do you see Sahih? Say, just wait. Few years from now, actually, maybe five minutes from now, after they see what I'm saying here, they will say this is weak. 
can any Muslim tell me how you can ins what look look what it says here they open his stomach and they filled his heart what is his heart have to do with the stomach are you telling me that your prophet his heart is in his stomach hello So two angels they came to the prophet peace upon him and they open his stomach mashallah huh? And they took it out not only they open it like they take the whole stomach out like this guy is like a trunk You know they open the stomach and they, they start taking everything out and now They brought a dish made of gold huh? And they wash it with water of Zamzam, and then they filled it. They filled his heart with wisdom and knowledge. Did you see that it says they filled his heart with wisdom and knowledge? So now, any Muslim who have a smart brain, he will say to himself, "I'm not going to accept this stupidity. Obviously, this is a lie." And it's a clear proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. Have you ever heard Muslim is a I did okay? Did Allah do that to Musa? Like did Allah put them with open the stomach of Musa and he cleaned his uh, belly and stomach? They found a watermelon there, they took it off, and then they inserted in his heart a dish of wisdom and a dish of uh, knowledge. By the way, just to be honest with you, all the knowledge I have about Islam, I get it by a dish from eBay. You know, and I can find you millions of those stories like this, you know, stupid. So what happened always when the Muslims, like if you don't criticize and it, like, if not someone like me, let's make it simple. Show them how stupid those stories, because there's many people that read stories, but they don't notice how stupid they are. You know what I mean? There's people have gift and they can show how stupid it is. And there's people they read, but they don't really get it. They don't, they don't see what the problem. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? What are you telling me, man? Your prophet, he get ready to be a prophet by a surgery, plastic surgery, and they insert a dish of wisdom in his face. In his, in, and now Muhammad is, after the surgery, is not the same as Muhammad before the surgery. Let, me, let us make it simple. After, oh, I'm typing in Arabic. Hold on. Let me switch. Muhammad. Muhammad before is not same as Muhammad after. Okay, what happened now after the surgery? Any Muslim can tell me? What is the difference between Muhammad before the surgery and Muhammad after the surgery? Muhammad after the surgery, supposedly now he have a dish of wisdom, but he became more idiot. And I can give you a clear example. Do you want to see? Muslims, do you want to see what the difference between Muhammad before the surgery and Muhammad after the surgery? You see, like we have, we have uh, Shabir Ali before the BHD and Shabir Ali after the BHD. What happened? Is it is it different? When you say to me, we install a dish of wisdom in his uh, heart, that means he should be different. He should be have a change. Itikaf, like you know, like you know, supposedly Muhammad is a decent man who prayed to Allah, you know, so itikaf, like he is uh, sitting alone uh, praying to Allah and worshiping, you know, so his wife she is doing itikaf with him, mashallah, you know, but her without panty. So now, Muhammad before is not the same as Muhammad after. What is the change of Muhammad after? You will not believe it. I'm telling you, you will not believe it. Muhammad after the surgery installing a dish of wisdom became more stupid Any Muslim can explain to us What the point of the surgery if Muhammad after the surgery became more stupid Let me do this hold on hold on you know I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to make this video short. I mean uh, this is will take long now. I hate myself. I hate myself all right, all right. Let's let's go to something. 
All right, let us open the screen. Here we go. Let us find you different hadith. Muhammad is smart. Muhammad now after the wisdom. Muhammad now he got the wisdom. Okay. <sighs> Which one we will show you? Let us see. Show you something kind of comedy. Let us look for something comedy. Comedy. Oh. Website. Sometimes the search doesn't work. Okay. Let's see. Uh, mm. Let us see this one. Look at this one. This is Muhammad after the surgery. I was with the messengers of Allah S A W S F M O O O L O G H 200 Mercedes hmm? while Maimuna was with him. Okay, this is very complicated story. This has happened when we we are ordered to observe veil. Okay, so now the, the Muslims Balbula. They get the order to wear veil. All right. Why they wear a veil? You remember the story, right? Because uh, because Umar al-Khattab was speaking about the ass of Sauda, and he was singing for her when she was doing pupu. Arif Naki, Arif Naki, we know we know who you are. Hello, we noticed your ass, and this is why the chapter of al-Hijab came down, and this is why women they are wearing veil. Mashallah. Now, the Prophet said, observe veil from him. But hold on. Who is this guy? Who? Who? This guy is coming. His name is Ibn Umm Maktoum. Ibn Umm Maktoum, he's a blind. Look what the wife they said to him. We asked the messenger of Allah, but is it him blind? <laughs> he can he can neither see us nor recognize us. The Prophet said, Are you both blind? <laughs> Don't you see him? <laughs> this is Muhammad after the surgery. Question Muslims are Muslims women are allowed to see a man wearing his clothes? Are he? Is he allowed to present himself in a yes, according to Muslim? Yes, Muslim women they walk in the street. And yes, in like in Taliban, they are trying to make only one eye for the Muslim in the burqa, but they still there is one eye, and they can see the man wearing his clothes. So what the problem? What the problem? Is this guy coming naked? No, he's an old guy. He is uh, blind. He cannot see them, and they can just sit and don't talk. He cannot see us, neither recognize us. But what happened here in this story? When he said to them, observe veil, as you see in the front of your eyes. And then they said to him, are you stupid or what? This guy is blind. So Muhammad, he got busted. He didn't want to back up with his statement. He's so sorry, I forgot his, uh, you know. No, he want to continue with his stupidity. So he said, oh, are you blind too? Are you blind too? So, are you saying women are not allowed to use their eyes and to see any man except their father and their brother and their husband? Are you saying that? So, what the Muslim will say about this hadith? Wait, you will see in the text right away. A Muslim he will say this is weak actually I just answer a Muslim in YouTube in other video I, I paused there he said to me the problem my friend you are quoting the Sunni hadith it's all fabricated this guy is a Shia 
so like the Shia is better the Shia who believe that if you wear a black shoe your penis will die and you will lose vision huh the Shia who have hadith it says that Ali he said that if you have sex under the Sun your son will be blind like what the heck so the Sunni hadith is a stupid your hadith is a smarter bring it on let us love together like supposedly you know, I am Shia you know those Sunni are stupid man the Shia the Sunni are stupid we are Shia read the Shia hadith well, what the Shia hadith Shia hadith is the most stupid ones crazy you see if the Sunni are crazy like 80% the Shia is 200 to 100% to 100% crazy madness have you ever heard of somebody say to his followers if you have no there's a conversation between Muhammad and Ali he said to him oh Ali oh mommy oh Ali Ali don't have sex standing okay why anyone knows why Ali he said to why Muhammad said to Ali according to the Shia don't have sex stand, is, is standing any Muslim can tell me what is the purpose of this advice a man he want to have sex with his wife as he wish what's your problem She's his wife, standing, sleeping. What's what the problem? Look what Muhammad said. Because this is the position of donkeys. Like, what the heck? If you have sex standing, this is the positions of donkeys. Since when? <laughs> so supposedly the Shia guy is telling me, like, don't listen to the Sunni man, the Sunni is stupid. They have stupid stories. Read our books. Just wait. My coming book about Islam and sexuality will make the Muslims go crazy. I have. I don't have everything about sex and Islam. No, almost like already. I'm now in like 250, 60 pages. I think. You know. Uh, let, let me give you. Let me give you an idea. You wanna get. You wanna get an idea, guys, about my book. You wanna get an idea about my book. Let me show you. Hold on. Uh, so anyway my book will be like I'm trying I'm trying to keep it small so actually I'm thinking even to divide it to two pieces uh, to make it two volumes uh, because the problem is each time I decide to stop writing I find that I need to add more and you know you know there's always more so I have to stop in a certain point you know I have to finish it before the end of the year and I don't really have much time left uh, because after that I have many trips and it will be very hard to concentrate and write you know any anything uh, anyway uh, this is this is uh, this is an idea about my coming book which is going to be about Islam and sexuality all right take a look this is the index mashallah alhamdulillah all right um, so like it's it's a, a endless topic actually topics and um, you guys you will like it very much but the problem is still I am not satisfied with uh, the topics because still there's more you know uh, because I can add more but the problem is the more you add the more the books will be uh, will be big so I cannot make it big because I noticed the bigger it is the less people who really uh, read you know the people they like small books so I might even this one I I make it two uh, 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 two books you know split it to two books and uh, then uh, will be uh, better for people to just like maybe 130 40 pages each something like that you will see it soon you know and I'm sure you guys you will like it and. Uh, uh, and even the Muslims will buy it because the Muslims they love any topic have to do with eggs especially the crazy the madness you will find this in, in this book you know uh, do Dubai do Dubai do you have a Muslim we have a Muslim there what if I am wrong show me I'm wrong here we go you want to call me we have a Muslim here listening. You call me, show me you are wrong. Do you want to call me live? I am in I am in Skype. You will go. My Skype is in the top. Call me. Who is the Muslim wanna call me and show me that I'm wrong? Who is the hero? 
who will get the blessing of Allah and Allah will give him a lot of versions real versions my friend not like you know fake versions, plastic ones six toys real versions you will get real versions and Allah will make you make your penis as the Prophet said endless don't you want to get that imagine if you receive such a penis how many cable company they will sign a contract with him to use your penis to transform oil gas uh, even oxygen through the ocean and the fish they can suck from your you know the oxygen I mean that's amazing so what do you mean what if you are wrong call me prove me wrong let everybody laugh at me we stay here for hours and keep saying who is a Muslim wanna call me and then they don't call um, but you are wrong Who's a Muslim wanna call me? So to make it simple, the Muslims they say the book of Ibn Ishaq is wrong, the book of Al Bukhari is wrong, the book of Sahih Muslim is wrong. Okay, what about the Quran? What about the Quran, Muslims? Are you going to say the Quran is corrupt too? Trust me, already I witness many Muslims, they said that to me, life. They accuse the Quran to be a stupid book, and this is not be the real Quran. The second I show them how stupid the Quran is, it's the same second they deny it. Huh? What about the Quran says that the women, they have a sperm coming? As an example, fast example, something we remember fast. Women, they have a sperm, and their sperm is coming from their ribs. I like reps but I mean that became really too much this is God who says that there's a gushing fluid will make the baby is coming from between the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women I mean how amazing smart your God is that going to be the mistake of al-Bukhari huh Since women, since when women they have a sperm? You see, when I used to be naive, this is like long time ago, just yesterday. Uh, I was in the beach and I saw a woman. She have something white in her chest. I thought it's a cream. But when I came home and I saw this verse, I said to myself, "How disgusting she was! That was her sperm." Since when Muslims women have a sperm? Hello. The degree of six in his of six in hadith is little as compared to actual sex to enjoy by Muhammad. I, I don't you know about wrong or not. I'm not you know. See, for me, wrong is about me. Something I say something wrong. It's not about what they are wrong. Uh, you know, every, all this is is a fiction. You know, this is a stupid guy trying to make himself like he is a prophet. So he's trying to tell us something nobody knows. It's supposed to this is a prophecy. Muhammad is prophesying to us about how the baby is created, but who in the world wanna believe in such a garbage? I remember once there is two Muslims they came to uh, to ch I have a chat room, and one of them he claimed that he teach in Stanford, and the idiot he started telling me, yes, the sperm is coming from the the highest size of the abandon and the badum 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 badum. It says ribs Abdul. What abandon? Since when the sperm and women have a sperm? I mean, who is the stupid in this earth who will believe women have a sperm? What about them? The women she have an egg, not a sperm. The man have a sperm. Hello. So based in this chapter of the Quran, the women. If we assume that the sperm of the women Muhammad is a stupid to the point he, he think it's a sperm let us say for the sake of uh, you know of a comedy a drama comedy we say it is the egg so are you saying to me the egg of the women is coming from her ribs may Allah rip you parts brother if we go right now huh just to show you that we are not making things up this is the Muslim scholars you know this okay I will go to the Muslim interpretation not Christian Prince interpretation 
All right. Oh boy. What is that? It's a gushing fluid issuing from between the lions of the man and the breast bones of the women. Wow. 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 That's amazing. If you don't feel like converting to Islam, you better convert now because now we have a discount. It's the discount is special made for the idiot, stupid, dumb, crazy people. What? There's a gushing fluid coming from, and since when the man his sperm is coming from the backbone, man. The backbone is where the sperm is coming from. Now let me tell you the sexuality education of Muhammad. Muhammad he noticed that if a man exaggerate with his sexual exp, you know, like uh, blah blah blah, bong bong bong, bing bong bing bong. So he have a he will have a pain in his back. So Muhammad he thought about it, and the Arab they thought about it. It must be from the back then. Ah, it was the backbone. <laughs> What a bunch of idiots. And now Muhammad, he took what the Arab believed, the savage Arab, and he put it in the Quran as a scientific education coming from his God. And by the way, where here it says the ribs of the women, this is not correct. It's not really the ribs of the women. It is the location of the necklace in the women's chest, which means it is the upper side of the ribs of the women, not the ribs. This is where the sperm of the woman is coming from. So the madness of the Muslims is English. Now what they will say, what they will say, trust me, they will say, Tafsir al-Jalalain is stupid, is not true. Well, Abdul, the Quran says that clearly. What a Jalalain? The Quran used the word at taraib Do you see the word here? at taraib We can go right now to the dictionary and you will see at taraib is the upper the location of the necklace in the bones of the chest of the women and a soul is at the backbone so your God your stupid God saying that a man he have a sperm coming from the bone of his backbone huh actually you know this is a true story I have a friend he made an accident and his backbone broken and since when he cannot have kids <laughs> true story what taraib huh so okay, a uh, Jalalain is a stupid. Okay, what uh, other, other scholar? Which scholar you want? Which scholar you want, Abdul? Which one? Which one? S seriously, which one? Which one you like? I'm going to spoil you today. Actually, this is my challenge to the Muslims. I challenge any Muslim right now to call me life and choose his own verses and say to me in this chapter in the Quran there is no error who want to do that who is the Muslim want to do that nobody because they knew it's a stupid book and all those videos we see in YouTube about the scientific miracles is nothing but a joke it is a scam And if you want to laugh really about the scam of what it's called the scientific miracle, uh, feel free. You can get my books. Go to Amazon.com right now and search for a Christian Prince books. I made a specific books to answer the lies of the Muslims about what is called the scientific Quran. And everything in my books is only coming from Islamic authentic source with the number of the hadith with the page with the name of the book I never saw a Muslim he can make a complaint I want to see a Muslim I like, see Shabir Ali, he was from the earliest who bought my book before he wanna debated me because, and then he back back up after he saw my book. He said to himself, "No way, this guy is not the one we wanna play with." So he back up, he ran away, the coward. 
But do you think that Shabir Ali, who have a big mouth, trying to defend Islam, will not make a statement about something he found wrong in my book? The issue he did not find anything wrong. Everything is truthful. Everything there is written from his books. Everything is proven he's a prophet to be a false prophet. So he kept his mouth shut and he said nothing. And this is the same for the rest of the Muslims. Actually, one smart Muslim, he threatened me. He is going to buy all my books and burn them. <laughs> and I said, when, man? I'm waiting. You know, I cannot wait. I cannot wait, seriously. I mean, this is amazing. And those who bought my German book, they are going crazy too. You know, I have a French book, German book, Swedish, uh, a Dutch, and uh, uh, I hope more, more soon to come. Do we have any Muslim? He have a problem with what I am saying. Anyone? All right. Today at 4.30, as you know, we have 4.30 p.m. New York time. We have another broadcast, as usual, every Friday. So be with us. This is just to say hello, share the coffee with you. And thank you very much, guys. My coffee now is cold. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I forgot to drink my coffee because of you. But what we can say, we were busy with the ribs of the women. And who is, a, who is, ha, who is, the, the, who is the most beautiful creature have ribs more than women? <laughs> who can produce many things? The ribs of the women, you can eat them. And they can produce babies. Unbelievable. So beautiful. Allahu Akbar. I mean, uh, <clears throat> each time I go to buy ribs, they are so expensive, you know. So I like buy ribs once every two years, you know. But now if I get married and I have 72 women, uh, virgins, and they have a breast uh, and ribs, I mean, uh, look how wealthy I'm going to be. We can sell a sperm to overseas. Every woman, we collect her sperm in the morning from her reps, and we, we put them in bottles, and we send them in uh, Amazon. I mean, that's a good idea. So thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And we see you again in a few hours from now, exactly, almost, four hours and uh, 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Made by a fool for the fool. See you soon. Bye-bye.